What's up everybody, it's George T from The Wagon here. This week, we're gonna be doing some fun stuff. We got ourselves a four wheel disc brake kit, Willwood kit from Russell over Old Speed for Rodney Pinkerton's 68 square back. So we're gonna be installing some really nice brakes onto this square back here. We're not gonna bore you with all the other stuff. So far we've gone in, we've replaced out the master cylinder. When you're going four wheel disc brakes, you must have a four wheel disc brake master cylinder set up. Rodney also purchased some two inch drop spindles from Russ. So what we did here is this was already lowered. So I've taken up two splines here to compensate for the two inch drop or adding to the spindle. Should help with ride quality. If this is incorrect once we put on the ground, if it's not low enough or whatever, we will readjust the height. This kit came with new e-brake cables. We've already installed those into the vehicle. And I've also, oh, I've also installed the line bug drop plates, adjustable drop plates in the rear of this. This is quite the bear. Once again, we took a car that was lowered. We're adding a drop plate that has the lower into it, plus the adjustability. So this actually may need to be redone as well if it does not sit low enough. They are a nice, very nice kit. I liked it. The grease you use on these is a mother of pearl. It's sticky and tacky as all get out. It looks like a dielectric, but it doesn't act like a dielectric. These are a product from Limebug in the UK. Nice quality pieces. It's your adjustment right there. So I kind of got it centered. We'll see where this thing lands once we get it back on the ground. Right here, we're looking at the components for the front disc brake kit. So Rodney opted for the zinc plated slotted cross shield rotors. I put the same ones on my bus. They're excellent. He also opted for the black Wellwoods, which I did because he's running a detailed view. Instead of having a red dot behind it, we got it's going to blend in with the black. I really like it. He also opted for the stainless brake lines, which is a great upgrade that Russell offers. Along with those e-brake cables you saw in there, this is an additional charge because normally a, near, a rear disc brake kit comes with some that you have to make. These are custom made for Type 3s. The rear disc brake kit. We get our stainless lines, two billet line hold downs, studs for the rear rotors, our rear rotors, zinc plated cross road slotted. These are our two banjo fittings for the stainless lines. We get our wheel seal kits, a multitude of shims because every car is a little bit different with the spacing. So the kit normally only comes with those. Russell adds these extra ones in there, which I really appreciate that. We got forged brackets, the only way to fly and the Willwood calipers with the e-brake mechanisms on them. So we've already gone and removed everything from the rear, all the type one brakes. But we made sure to put some safety wire on our axle. Whenever this thing does not have that axle cap on it, you make sure that she doesn't come out. We're not trying to draw falcon plates here. We're gonna pull all these spacers off. We gotta replace all of our O-rings and everything. There's an inner O-ring in there we need to change along with a washer that goes in there. And there's an outer O-ring that's still on there that we need to change out. All this will get cleaned. We're gonna clean our two axle caps on, and our very first step is actually putting our rear caliper mount onto the back. We got a stone piece of granite, perfectly flat surface. Some, what grit do we put on here this time? 400. We got a 400 grit wet paper, and we do a figure eight on these axle caps, just to make sure. Go ahead and give me a flip on that beam. And you will see where it's cleaning it, where it's getting anything that isn't at the right level out of it. Man, someone really beat the crap out of this thing at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Something extra we do. Got all cleaned up, fresh out the solvent tank. Have we changed the seal them yet? Nope. Okay. We'll be changing the seal, and I'll show you how we do that. The old seal was removed. We use a seal removing tool. Be very careful not to gouge your edges as you're pulling that out. New seal here. You put them in from the bottom that way. I always get it started by hand. And once I'm comfortable, then I'll take my seal installing tool and I'll hit it with this with a hammer and you can tap it in. You could also do this on a press if you're equipped to do so. Actually press them in.
and you're going to press that in until this is flush with that edge there. So you see it's still recessed inside there. So we got a little bit to go. The most important part of this seal is that inner spring right there. So you need to make sure that it is on there. Usually what I'll do is I'll push the spacer through here to verify that that spring is still pulling that rubber inward. Our first order of business is we're gonna remove the safety wire that we put in place here to hold our axle. Now that we got that removed, we're gonna remove our spacer. Our old O-ring on the exterior. There's our big O-ring. And we have one on the interior. Small O-ring. We're gonna pull that washer off right there. This is a sealed bearing application. You see how you can't see the cage in that. This is uh, an upgrade I like to do as well because when you drive an extremely lower car, you want to make sure that this has its own lubrication source. It will not get gear oil. Gear oil will not travel uphill to get to the end of these, especially if you're low, low. And this, apparently we want this thing to be low, low. So we've got this all cleaned up everywhere. Make sure you clean out your splines. You want to get everything out of this area. I can still see a little bit in there. I'm going to get out of that crack along there. We want it as clean as possible so it has the best mating surface for the new O-rings and seals to go onto. So this is the order that we're going to install everything. That first one you see there is the flat washer. The next one is the smaller diameter O-ring. Then your spacer would go on it, that's the third one there. And you want this tapered side facing inward. Tapered side facing inward, that's going to basically cap that O-ring. And the rest is pretty easy after that. We'll, we'll go over as we're installing it. As per our diagram, we're putting the flat washer on first. Small O-ring. Make sure you don't roll this. You want to go over it and seat in place. If you roll it and you put a twist in it, Sometimes it won't get a good seal on it. So this is the one I was talking about with the slight taper. I actually put this inside my bearing cap when I do this. The reason I do that, I wanna make sure that that's, that spring that we showed earlier in the seal install stays in there. Cause sometimes you can put this thing through and not realize it and that sucker's come off inside. If I do this and I put it in my cap, when I put it together, I know it's in the proper location. So we got to get other seals involved here. Our outer O-ring goes right along that edge right there. Basically caps over the bearing. Once again, try not to roll this. Don't put a twist in it. Don't get it twisted. We're only going to use one paper gasket on these. The two come in the kit. Two is for a reduction gearbox. One is for your standard swing axle. So we're gonna put some 1211 on this. I'm gonna put some 1211 on my cap. And then we'll get the four bolts all cleaned up. And we're gonna get it all torqued in place with, with our caliper bracket on there. I'm using 1211 sealant on this. I apply some to this. Make sure we give that a good seal around. I'm gonna put some around this housing here, right along that edge. You don't need to put a whole bead on there because you're gonna end up smearing it with your finger all the way around like that. I take this, put a little bit on my finger, we're basically gonna just wrap it around that and get it coated on both sides with the same 1211. We've got our caliper mount. Caliper mounts go to the back on the install. Put 
put that sucker on place. We'll get our paper gasket on that. Now I'm holding this in place with my left hand right now. Already our O-rings are in place. We're bringing that sucker up to it. up so it holds everything in place. I put two on before I snug it up to make sure I got it lined up properly. If you put one on you might be set severely disappointed when you go to put it back on. We're gonna go to our without guest workbook to get the torque on this. things working in our favor with this application. The sealed bearings always help to eliminate any sort of leak you're going to get from your axle seal kit. The liberal amount of 1211 I put in there on both sides should give me enough to fill any void or gap that's potentially in either the brackets, housings, or cap. The way we machine this cap also helps out tremendously. Make sure they have a flat, smooth mating surface because you can see what it's butting up against is a nice machined mating surface on the forged MP rear caliper bracket. And if you're going to do disc brakes, spring for the forged brackets. Don't get those stamp steel garbage. Get the forged brackets. They're the only way to fly. The MP instructions say 25 foot pounds. My without guesswork says it's 28 pounds. I'm going to take the 28 pounds. Next part we're going to install is our new rotor. Before I put the rotor on, I like to put some anti seize on all the threads and on the splines. I've noticed sometimes with the MPs they're a little tight going on. So I like to make sure they have some sort of lubrication there. So it's not going to allow it to bind up. We do have to tighten this in place before we start putting calipers on. Because the fact when you tighten this, it may move it just the slightest bit. We can't have this sticking out and then torque it after everything's been done. And then our, our calipers then out of alignment with the rotor. So we're gonna go ahead and torque this down. in <clears throat> we've got a bar that we place here the other side of it rests onto the lift and we're going to torque this to 253 foot pounds in accordance with the vw book pin's going to line up. If it does not line up, you need to go more. You need to keep going. Never take it back. Always more forward if it's not lining up. We've got our cotter pin in there. We bent it up. We'll just finish up those tabs there. And I always give this top one an inward hit so we're just pulling it up at all times. Studs are in. Axle's torqued. This thing spins nice and beautifully. Now we're going to space out our caliper to get it centered onto the rotor. So when we go to center that 
we're actually just centering this bracket right here. I'm going to take these two bolts off here, I believe they're 13 millimeters, to separate this from the actual caliper part. This is like your, your, your bracket that holds it in place. These calipers are very nice. I put this microfiber down to protect it. We don't want to scratch it, we don't want to do any damage to it. We got a 15 millimeter to hold that side captive, 13 millimeter on, on this exterior bolt. We've got our rotor torqued down, our caliper bracket is torqued down. We've got our bracket for the caliper separated and we're doing a dry fit on this. So I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but we have a bigger gap on the interior than the exterior. So we're gonna add a spacer at this point here, in between the caliper bracket and the caliper itself, we're gonna put one shim in there and space it out this way to try and center it up exactly on the rotor. So for putting on the spacers we need, what I do is I put the hardware through that caliper bracket. I've got the shim I've decided on. I'm gonna put grease on this and stick it to the caliper bracket. So I just put a little dollop of grease on it. And that grease now makes it stick there, stays in place. Then do the same thing on the bottom. I'm adding a metric M10 wave washer to this side here. Right now I'm just gonna dry fit it. When I'm happy with it, I'll actually pull out the hardware and lock tight it in place. We're gonna snug this up and then take a measurement. And if we need to adjust it, meaning if we need to add a shim, we'll do that at that time there. So I'm just gonna hand tighten it, no torque this time. We're gonna go to measure front spacing. That looks really good. Looks like we got a nice even reveal. Might be a little bit proud on this side, but we're talking fractions. Barely any. Looks really close and centered. And that's what we want. So once we get this spaced out properly, this stays onto it. And now we're going to add our caliper onto the bracket. Brake pads actually go <clears throat> into the caliper mounting bracket. Make sure they're fully bedded. There's a step here that the pad lip sits on. Make sure it's just fully bedded on that. This is our caliper for this side because the e-brake is on the top. You want your e-brake mechanisms on top. This is our hardware. I have reapplied Loctite to it. Got our bottom bracket started. Move the springs on your pads to where they would be aiming downward. Make sure they're lined up properly. And press that in as such to get your top one lined up. 15 millimeter holds the interior, 13 millimeter, millimeter on the exterior bolt. Caliper is mounted in place. Get that bracket nicely centered onto that rotor. And they look fantastic. So we router our new e-brake cables into the car. This housing here is going to index on this bracket. And now this ball needs to get on the other side of this here. Now we got our ball indexed in the right spot. We're gonna put our E-clip that comes with the brake cable and get it put over that. Make sure this has a nice sweep and is out of the way. 
We may even tie it off somewhere around here so it doesn't get pinched in between suspension components. So this being a deluxe kit, it came with the stainless steel lines. We've got a banjo fitting on one end that's going to go to our caliper. And then a standard brake fitting on this side that goes to our M10 by 1.0 hard brake line. I'm going to attach that line first. So with any banjo fitting, washer on both sides of the actual banjo. You don't double stack on one side, you put a washer on both sides. All right. Our stainless line is connected. Russell provided this really nice billet brake line hold downs go into your axle tubes. So our passenger side is completed. You're gonna repeat the same procedure on the other side. So Dean's already gone through and packed all the bearings. We've also installed the rear seal onto each of the rotors. These came with the studs already on them. We do need to keep the thrust washer and our pinch bolt from the original spindles. They were not provided in the kit. Russell does provide dust caps, which is very nice. I don't even think Impian does that in their kits. We're gonna move on to installing this front brake kit now. So something I want to point out, when you pack bearings, so we do use a bearing packer to pack the physical bearing, but another thing that we do, is if you look inside there, there's a big dollop of grease inside the rotor. That is so your bearing has an additional supply of grease as it's going through and rotating. Right, we've already got the old speed drop spindles on. So type three spindles, very basic. Pinch bolt here, pinch bolt there. Disconnect the tie rod here, and then the whole spindle can come off as one. That's how we remove the old ones, and that's how we put these new ones on. So this is my first time ever messing with these. I don't think we're gonna run into too many problems. When they're coming from old speed, he's usually done the R&D and everything should just bolt together. See that squirt? All that juice came out, all that goodness. That's when I know that we packed them properly. Thrust washer. I want that VW side facing outward. It's also got a little bit of kerf on this side. This side's very sharp. So I want that little soft side coming out to me. So when I'm tightening these, I'm gonna tighten it. And then I come back one stud. Next time a T handle. She spins well. No lateral play. I'm happy with it.
dry fit the caliper on first. Everything looks like it's going to fit well. So we put another washer behind the, hard, the mounting hardware to make sure it stayed away from the rotor. I saw it coming past just a touch and I didn't want any contact there. We're going to give this caliper a quick cleaning with some, just with some simple green and a microfiber. These Willwood fronts are the best for doing the brake pad swap. Nice and easy. And just one cotter pin to hold everything in. So nice. Just want to spread them so the pin can't just pop out. There's a sticker over the hole in the back. Let me get you back there. There's a sticker here that we remove once we have it mounted we're actually going to connect the brake line to it. Do not remove that prematurely because you do not want to add dirt into your system. Put the tab in to secure your line in place. Right now that I'm ready for it, I'm going to peel my little sticker off. Old Speed Willwood Type 3 front brake install. Beautiful fit and finish. No issues, no worries. We get the same thing, repeat the same exact process on this side. I do not bench bleed my master cylinders. We have a power bleeder we hook up to it that forces fluid through the system. So I do not bench bleed, I do a power bleed. So lowering a Type 3 in the front. If you're familiar with lowering the rear end, you go off of splines, you do the same thing on a Type 3 in the front. This set screw right here, goes in the bottom. You see the top one here. You only adjust the bottom arm. So once you remove this set screw, this arm can now come out of the beam. So it pulls out like that and you can clock it up or down on those splines. The way that that spline there, that's how you adjust it. So you can see our initial mark here and how we've moved it one spline now. Initially we did two splines, raising it because we were putting two inch drop spindles and that was too much of a raise. So now we're just gonna take one spline away from it. Easy peasy, pop your spindles off. This is after the old speed kit's been installed. Dean's putting it back on this side over here. So that's all it is, bottom adjustment. Top one, she's just a floater. We got Rodney's car done. I think it looks pretty killer. It's got a great stance to it. Get you guys set up on this. Truth be told, I gotta rip into those again. It's too low. 
they're adjustable and that's almost all the way up. Why have them adjustable if it's slammed is all the way up? So we gotta raise it. We'll be redoing it. When I do something like that, I do it on my dime, my time. Granted, we did a double drop there, meaning that the drop plate added an actual drop in the plate itself and the car was already lowered. So when I was factoring the degrees I wanted to go, I just overcompensated, or I'm sorry, undercompensated for the drop that I, of how much it was allowing. I got Andy Finch's gear here. He's got some of the line bug plates as well. So we will be doing a tutorial on this one. So you will see how they go on. And for you type three heads out there, I'm in communication with the general. If y'all know, you know, the general of the type three army. We got some plate steel. We got a square back that's way too low. And we're gonna do a mod in the front that every Type 3 should have. I had a beautiful 66 that got destroyed on a railroad track because of those stupid front mounts. I'm gonna give it a crack. I have never done it. I got faith in my skills and you guys are gonna go along on that journey with me. So we got a lot of stuff coming up to get done along with these babies over here still. I got more work than I can handle. Anybody looking for a job, a J-O-B that knows what you're doing, hit a brother up. All right, that's it. We'll see you guys next week.